talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing for talking. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing. So many things to talk about tonight. Plenty of picks of kingfish in the rip doing the rounds after a big long weekend of fishing. All the picks from a couple of fisheries busts. We show you the essential gear you need for kingfish in product of the week. And we'll show you some cracker trout fresh out of Tolondo this morning. They're just absolutely beautiful. Plenty more on top of that list too. A big show, let's get into it. Welcome Adam. Thanks, Dave, and wow, it keeps getting bigger and bigger, doesn't oh, I it? Just, you just wonder how we're going to fit it all into one hour, yeah. because it is a massive program, and the kingfish, particularly down the Mornington Peninsula, is just absolutely sensational, but all round, virtually statewide, from, you could, you could say Portland to Mallacoota. Pretty much, is definitely. King, kingfish capital, yep. and uh, unfortunately, New South Wales, places like Naruma hasn't picked up that well. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of small fish still around, um, but I'll tell you what, it's all good for Victoria. They can all come here, fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> Trelly, welcome. Welcome to you too. Uh, great to see you. I've got an Thank interesting you, question about carp for you later on, but uh, hope it's not a recipe. Because it'll probably include <laughs> the, the nappy <laughs> off uh, as his newborn to make it give it a flavour. It'd, it'd probably be uh, <laughs> stuffed with body grubs or something yeah. like that if you, if you had anything to do with that. But anyway, uh, now all good. Um, how is things up your neck of the woods? I mean, it's been good. you know quite. Or the weather's been a little bit ordinary. Is it still warm when you get over that north? of the Great Divide. Yeah, a few more degrees warmer down here, so yeah, but the fishing's yeah. been really, really good. We're still getting a lot of reports in, Murray yeah. Cod, Yellow Belly, the red fin is starting to get going a couple mm. of weeks, so yeah. No, I saw through. some beautiful, so I, I, you know, the way we've been talking, it was Yellow Belly, I guess when we went back October, November, then it went into mm. Cod a little bit, but um, some nice Yellow Belly, I saw some photos that got sent through to the shop uh, today from the long weekend, some beautiful yeah. Yellow Belly around Echuca in the Murray. Yeah, that, yeah. I suppose people, it's like the snapper, you get sick of catching cod. Yeah. You know, I try and catch yellow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. and they target that type of thing and yeah. a bit of finesse. So, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's all over, all over has been really, really good. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about Tolondo later on. I mean, the water is still flying in. 5,000 megalitres takes about three weeks. And I think we're nine days in now with the, the water stirring up a little bit. But just when people have said to us, hey, things are a little bit quiet at Tolondo, um, Along comes a couple of crackers caught this morning. Jeff Stock, you may remember him on our program uh, before Christmas saying, you know, he was vir virtually a fantastic advocate for Tolondo. He had his son and his granddaughter out this morning and some cracker trout. We'll show those photos later on. Um, but plenty happening in the fishing world too. Like I said, a couple of big busts uh, just recently on abalone and snapper, and you'll just shake your heads at these idiots, I tell you. Um, drink, drive, bloody idiot. Um, yeah. th this is the, the campaign. You wait till you see the photos. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's just amazing what people do. And I know we can't fit it in. I mean, we try and keep everything Victorian, but the marlin bite oh. on the New South Wales south coast yep. is out of control, it boys. Is. Out of control. It is. There's um, da daily photos of yeah, marlin getting put up. Yeah, Victorian uh, Game Fishing Club fished the comp at Bermagui. They said 55 marlin tagged on Saturday morning. The week before, in Batemans Bay, the the, uh, the comp there, 105 marlin um, over the weekend. I like haven't got time to mention that. I know, unbelievable. Well, we, we should, yeah. I, and I haven't got photos, because I mean, we try and, we try and keep it Victorian, yeah. but uh, it, it's sensational. I know uh, Brendan Wing's been well, up north he, he and did, he caught did a, a monster. You know, so he did a crazy, I think he did a three-day a three day trip or something from Jarvis Bay back down to Burmy and back home and, and basically caught marlin the whole way. Like a phenomenal effort. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure when You Fish TV kicks, kicks up again, we'll see all the footage from that. But massive hours, but the rewards, the fish are unbelievable. I know, some good picks, like I said. And don't forget, you can keep up to date with our official Facebook page with Catch of the Week hotspots and much more. Don't forget to like us and to make it easy, just go to our website at talkingfishing.com.au and click on the links to Facebook and Twitter. And if you'd like to chat with us live, send us a tweet using the hashtag that was Oh, it's on our screen now. There you go. Um, use that hashtag. But boys, it's time to check out what's being caught by the people at home. Let's have a look at some of the catches of the week. And kick it off. I'm just looking here. David Albarenk. How do you say that, Adam? Okay. David Albarenku. 
David, David well, Alberinku. We, apo- we apologise if that's wrong, <laughs> but that's what we're going 13 with. 13 <laughs> kilo <laughs> gummy out of Hastings. That is a, a well done, beautiful Dave. dummy. Uh, yeah. gummy. That, well, it's they, these, <laughs> it's, we're getting carried away, and rightly so, with the kingfish and the, the game fishing up in New South yeah. Wales. We've had as many gummy reports and photos of gummies through the last week mm, of yeah. guys maybe putting in a few hours on the kings early and either getting them or not and then just doing a drift with some bigger chunk baits on the bottom and picking up 12 and 13 kilo gummies yeah. off the bottom. Like it's mm. it's crazy. I, I, I didn't put the photo up this week, but I got a, a text message at four o'clock this morning from Michael Buxton, the chair of Future Fish, with a beautiful gummy. He's been out with Sean Ferdier on Think Big and awesome. uh, just a cracker of a fish. We'll Simon, put it up in next yeah, week. So, Simon and Aldi was yeah, offshore I, and got a couple of good ones too. We're, we're limited to about six yeah. and we'll get on to <laughs> catch of the weeks, but there were yeah. so many this week and apologies to people at home that did send us pics. You just can't have them all. I tried to feature a few kingfish, but let, let's have a look at this variety. Nick Okirua, he was out with Jason Turner on Pro Red Fishing Charters, an 8.2 kilo snapper. And they still um, continue to hang you, around as well. Thank you very much. And I think totally. Jason's one of those guys who he just keeps on. He, he knows yep. the snapper. He knows That's where right. the big snapper are this time of year. While people have moved on to kings and whiting, that yeah. Jace sticks to the snapper because and they're sensational. Look at that, 8.2. Ca- yeah. And Jace will Almost catch them again. for 12 months of the year. Yeah. He will. Make no mistake yeah. about that. I mean, that's an exceptionally Targeted big them. fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Knows them. And there's no one else. Like, there's hardly yeah, anyone yeah. else on the reefs of where he's getting the snapper. Yeah. So fantastic. Let's keep moving along. Grant Lawson and his mate Brock had a fantastic day. Uh, King George Whiting off Queenscliff, and there's some cracker fish there. Um, I didn't, I didn't realise until last night just how good the whiting season had been. I sat down yesterday evening to write mm. my latest VFM report and flicked through the last month worth of. Um, fishing reports, basically. Yeah. It's all whiting. Yeah. The the whiting season is so good. I mean, it's been good in Western Port for quite a few years and keeps getting better. But Port Phillip, I think, seeing one of the best in many years. That's right. And and the average average size of fish has got to be up. Yeah. It has to be. In Western Port, Port Phillip, we've had guys come through the shop saying they're catching 41s, 42s in Port Phillip Bay consistently. Mm. And when generally speaking, the Port Phillip Bay fish are a smaller class. So, what a season. What a season. No kilos yet? Not that I've heard of, no. No, yeah. no I haven't no. seen a kilo whiting yet, but I'll tell you what, they're going to be close. So. It's, it's yeah. just waiting for the whiting challenge. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the kingfish. The first one up, Cameron, Cameron White. Beautiful kingfish out in Bass Strait. Does he play for... Melbourne or something in the AFL or no, yeah, is he a tennis AFL. player? Yeah, yeah no, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie cricketer. Aussie cricketer, all right. Yeah, I knew it was Aussie, one yeah, of them. Aussie I don't think you can see how much I'm into cricket. But anyway, know. Cameron, a uh, very nice kingfish there, caught late last week out in Bass Strait. Yeah, and that's a sample of what's been going on. Uh, Cam's done a few sessions. James Pattinson's been yep. um, fishing with him as well and doing a few solo missions. So these cricketers are getting right amongst their fishing and finding some cracking yeah, fish. Is like that one that. you reckon? Didn't have a size on oh, I think that went 90 something centimetres, yeah, 92, fish, 93 fish. centimetres. Looked like a nice fish, yeah, too. no, absolutely. Uh, down to the rip, David Stockley, a beautiful kingfish in the rip on Saturday. Um, fair fish as well. Do they measure, well, measure these or they, uh, or they weigh them? Yeah, g- generally. Uh, oh, a lot of guys you talk about them in centimetres, yeah. but it's, yeah. um, unless you get a big one, like I over yeah. say, or, you know, look, you get to that magic sort of eight, nine kilo, people start talking yeah. about kilos, yeah. but otherwise um, in centimetres, yeah, basically. Like 40 centimetres between the eyes or something? Yeah, something <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing about so kingfish, and, we're, and, we're, and yeah. we've got to talk about kingfish a little bit more in, in during the show, but um, they're just, you can catch a 65 centimetre yep. and you can catch a metre. And yeah. they're just all mixed That's, in. There's no yeah, yeah. patch of That's one right. size That's of fish better, in Victoria. Exactly. It's, it's all over the place. So, mm. And uh, lucky last team leech, Hunter, Blackie and Rocky. They got in the rip on the weekend as well. And um, he sent us a little bit of a Kramer's mail bag with that, which I'll read out later on. But what a fantastic fish. And he said there was a lot of boats. Well, in fact, he yeah. said 100 boats in the rip on Saturday. Mm. So, so as long as they're all doing the right thing, it's all good. Oh, I know. And all I good. haven't heard anyone complain. I mean, there's been a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. One tip the, over on the weekend? Yeah. The, I heard oh, that was yeah. Mornington, wasn't it? Uh, no, that was in the rip. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah, a guy went out on his own, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. An older gentleman went out on his own, uh, was rescued. He, he's, uh, okay. he survived and is yep. alive and all that sort of stuff. But the fact of the matter is, it's a treacherous <laughs> bit of water. Yeah. Um, yeah. A hundred boats. Yeah, well, if you're going to tip a boat, <laughs> it, it is a dangerous place. Weekend. Exactly. Got a, yeah. and, and listen, <laughs> I must say, there's just as many <clears throat> kingfish being caught just inside the rip as there is in the rip itself. So just, yeah. you're probably better off staying inside or going out. There's some good marks about yeah. a kilometre in. Exactly. So yeah. 
Boys, we've got to keep it moving. Uh, if you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pick to info at ifish.com.au. And coming up on Talking Fishing, product of the week, an update on Tolondo and plenty more on Talking Fishing right after this. Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing, Talking Fishing, nothing but fishing, we're Talking Fishing. And like we said, it's all about the kingfish this week. There's a lot of kingfish being caught and product of the week. It's everything, all the essentials you need for kingfish. Uh, the things that you can't not take out on the trip ads. And number one on number one on the list, we're going to start with the most exciting, and it's got, got to be surface lures. Yeah. Have a hold of that, Charlie. Oh. Dave, you grab that one there. It is all about surface lures for kings because once they're up and about, it well, is the most fun you'll ever have. But yeah, it's gonna... not just about waiting for them to come. You know, these can be the ultimate teaser. Yeah. They really can. You you can turn these into a kingfish eating a live bait. Yep. You can turn them into dull and sulking on the bottom to up and about smashing everything that moves. It's all about getting this dancing along the top of the water. It looks like a skipping garfish or a skipping sari if you're up yep. the coast. Um, in a Dorado uh, jumpsuit, that one. Yeah, that's anyway. it. So that's, that's the <laughs> that's northern <probably> version. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's this one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, a, a, a clown suit. Uh, <laughs> suits you well. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, if you're having a, a couple of stick baits with you, yeah. um, you'd be mad because if the kings do come to the surface, whether on a bake school or something like that, and you've just got a couple of boring old slimies, there is nothing, you will not get no. the excitement factor yeah. that you, you get out of one of these you can, lures. You can have five or six kingfish swimming yeah. side by side, literally heading each, headbutting each other out of the way yeah. to mm. eat that. Yep. So it's well worth having one rigged at all times, just in now case they pop that's in the pop tempest up. range, they that's call a that. Yeah, so that's a tempest Probably the hooks on those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Good one. yeah, there's no. Well, you uh, once found, you found out the hard way. Yeah, yeah you found out <laughs> the outbreak the hard way. But yeah. once they're on Trelly, they don't yeah. get off. I, I can tell you. I'll um, use crayons until form four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got next? Yeah, I'll form four. What's that? Form, I'll, <laughs> I'll next. That <laughs> next. We we'll just watch the hooks there, Charlie. Okay, they're sharp. Oh, Dave, I'm going to grab the purple them. because I'm told that the purple just is working sensational yeah, at the well, moment. Well, these, these are called a tracker. They're, yep. a, they're a diving hard body. Yep. And these are the first thing I reckon you'd put out mm. on your way to your mark, whether you're looking for kingfish stacked up to jig yep. or whether you're getting to your rocky headlands to tow your live baits. I'd have these out every single time you move. Mm -hmm. They're a great searching lure. Because and, they're and always work working. Them, and work them hard. Exactly. Yep. Get them down. Like the hardy exactly. work them, you know, get them down deep, get five to seven metres out of them. Exactly. Because that'll get the fish stirred up. Yep. Mm. And just, and always have them out. It's, it's one of those things. The more you can get these things to play the game, the better it's going to be. Because they will switch on and off like a light switch. Yeah. They're like every other yeah. fish, but once they're on, they're likely yeah. to stay on and go hard. Yeah. That's, so that's, just always have something in the water. Coming from an inland point of view, if I send someone salt water anywhere, yeah. I always try and get them to, use, to take one of these because I've caught yeah. you know, um, mackerel, yeah, yeah. dog tooth tuna, southern yep. bluefin everything. tuna, and even you yep. know, these guys are talking about down here. It's just one of the most universal lures I find. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> Absol absolutely, yeah. And do, do you know, as I mean, we're, we're talking all about the different types of lures, and we're going to go into jigs in a minute. But I think a lot of people have found it very difficult getting live bait. Yes, um, yeah, it's or, more so or than it is. people are time poor. People are coming more and more time poor in life. So exactly. um, they don't want to go and spend you know, three hours. You've got to go out to the mussel farms or out through the heads to a reef or wherever, or, or sand for some bait mm. fish. Um, the, these are just as good. I mean, the, the design, yeah. the, the uh, detail in some of these lures is sensational, and people are just going, I'm, go I'm going, I'm going to get lures, yeah, I'm going to get jigs and I'll find yeah, them and I'll get them find hiding. Them so, yeah. Yeah. Another little tip with that one too is if you get knocked around in that style of lure, yeah. you can always take a pair of pliers and if it's tracking the one side or the other, yep. take a pair of you pliers tune. and just, yep. just tune it just a little bit and you can get them tracking back on, yeah. on track really, really yeah. well. So, so many people do. will get a lure and go, oh, it doesn't swim right, it's yeah. no good. Yeah. You've got to tune them. If they're not right, they just need a tiny little bit of tuning. So, Jigs. This is the flavour of the month. I reckon there's been more reports on kingfish so far this season caught on vertical jigs. Grab a load of that trolley. Dave, you've got the little squid one there. Um, there's been more reports on jigs so far this season than I reckon we got all of last year. Yeah. Which is indicating to me that the, the fish are schooled up pretty tight. Yeah. And as soon as you can find them, they're on. Get a jig to the bottom, 
uh, depending on what style of jig you've got, you are going to be working them either like mad or you're going to be working Dave. That one there is new to the market. It's got a yeah. little squid skirt hanging off the bottom. Long well, I was just going to say, the jigs are getting better and better. Exactly. Just when you think jigs can't get any better, they get better. Exactly. And long, I mean, that is a cracker. Long yeah. and hard retrieves for that. Really get it mimicking a squid. Don't, that tail, those tentacles at the end are going to do its thing. Yep. Um, I've got the high speed jig here, and these are probably the most, I guess, uh, popular, you guess. Yep. They're the type of one that make you cringe every time you see them because it's got pain written all over it. Mm. Drop them to the bottom, mm. work them as hard as physically possible just to get them up three quarters of the way, drop them back down and do it again. But the harder you work these, the harder they get hit. Mm. Now, Charlie, you've got the new wave of vertical jigs there, and these are a flutter style jig. Yeah. They're great for us because we can work them a hell of a lot slower, but you need to be paying attention because yeah. nine times out of 10, they're gonna get hit on the drop. Yeah, okay. So these high speed jigs, they're gonna get hit mm. on your retrieve mm. up, they're gonna get hit on the drop. So really be watching your line, really mm. stay in contact with your line. Braid is an absolute must for all of these, which we'll talk about s shortly. But really watch your line with that because they'll be taken on the drop yep. rather than on its way back up. So they're vertical jigs. There is hundreds of them on the market. They all catch kingfish. It pays to have a bit of a selection because they all do subtly different things, which can be enough to get these fish fired up. Moving on from the jigs, we covered this a couple of weeks ago. Now you got to go to the hooks first. Our hooks first. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'll get to that. Live, live bait hooks. Last, last year was... Live bait this year. Yeah, jigs. but there's still, I mean, still people are going to live bait, if and you, you've got to use the still, right hooks. It's still the number one. Yep. But right, they're very short shanked. They're yeah. very strong. Yeah. They might not look it in some cases, but they are ridiculously strong. Make sure you've got some because there will be that session. I guarantee it. Where live bait will be the only thing yeah. that catch can fish at some stage and this don't season. Don't fish too big a hook. No. Don't go too big. Don't be put um, off by the size because no. they all they're naturally a small hook anyway. Yeah. Um, so don't be put off there. As I grabbed before, the gimbals, which touched on this last week, kingfish are a species which demands that you have one of these yeah, on yeah. the boat. They hurt. They will hurt you. Well, you're talking yeah. small fish to huge thumpers yeah, by the exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. together. They will hurt you. So it, it pays to have one of these yeah. um, because you could get one of those don't, crazy Don't go sessions. out with it, without a gimbal because you'll go home with bruises. Yeah. That's right. Moment, so. Or give the rod to your mate. Or give the rod to your mate. You're fishing on your duties. Abuse him and say, don't be weak, go and wind harder, wind harder, get it into your gut. Tell him the size of it. Give the rod to your mate. There's one thing, if there's one thing that you've got to take with you, Trelly, Trelly, over your yeah. left shoulder. Um, so many people talk about gaffing kingfish yep. and seriously, I say, don't be too fancy with it because right. kingfish go nuts. Yeah, get them beside the boat. Even when yeah. you get them in the boat, they, they, they go nuts. They're a very strong fish. It's the, I liken it to Jeff Fennick. If you were 90, 100 kilos and you take on Jeff Fennick at 75 kilos, um, don't don't try it because he's just going to yeah. knock you around. Yeah. A kingfish will knock you around. The one way of guaranteeing a kingfish that's beside your boat getting into your boat, just put him in a net. And you're going to meet a fish in that net, no worries yeah. at all. Yeah. Pass, yeah. It, that's Pass an enormous the head over net. this way. So, I mean, I have mean, a look at the size of it. You can see that there. It's that good. It looks like Dave's been netting some sort of bird with it. Uh, that's probably with the, the cocky bird. On. <laughs> um, don't ever lend your cocky to Adam when you're on Christmas holidays because yeah, right that thing eh? flew away. Yeah, right, eh? yeah. Well, that had it for so long, long yeah. too, that one. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, like you said, it'll, it'll, it'll take... fit a meter fish in it, no worries. It's silicon, so it's tough as nails. Anti-tangle. Take a net with you. Don't try and get too fancy. The other thing we did want to talk about quickly is what's your weapon of choice? What rod and reel to use? And like we were saying earlier on, you can catch a 65 centimetre kingfish and you can catch a metre plus kingfish coming out of the same school, same area, just like that. Um, you've just got to be prepared to catch some big fish. So that's right. I just brought in a couple of units ads. Um, if you want to fish overhead, that's the cracker. Um, it's, it's a toss of 20. Uh, whack it, you know, decent braid and yep. um, and fish it hard. It's a jig 400 rod and, and you know, don't muck around. Get no. them in. If and you the, get a and this king is, hooked yeah, up. This is the, the perfect, probably one of the most universal combos for fishing for kings. Yeah. Live bait with it, no worries. It is a jigging combo, so they're designed for the jigs. Um, this is an 80 pound combo. It might sound like overkill, but I've seen 60 centimetre fish yep. pull drag. Oh. Yeah, on eighty on yeah. eighty pound tackle, so pound for pound, one of the toughest. Exactly, fish. so that's that's Used your too. live bait yeah, and 
jigging and, and that's that's your ultimate spin the piece. look at that that is the piece so stellar 10,000 um, and that's a, a that's custom a, rod that we right. do called a, a pelagic exactly uh, it's a nano. nano yep nano nano technology incorporated into the rod just helps give you that little bit of extra strength yeah that's your lure I don't, I don't know how good this will be on TV if uh, we, we have got fixed cameras here but see if you can oh. load that up a little bit okay um, you know, I'm, uh, you I'll can't see my face or anything. I'm yeah, getting the bruised there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that that will handle anything. That, yeah, that's right. And that's that's your ultimate casting yeah. weapon. So that's for your tempest, any of your soft plastics, which will work on kingfish, mm -hmm. anything that involves casting. You go to your longer, stronger. Believe it or not, that's a fifty-pound stick. Yeah, mm. doesn't look like it. Yeah. On TV, it probably looks like a brim rod. And it's but as light as it's it's a nano. It's, so it's graphite exactly. with a nano resin. It is yeah. sensational. So, so. so don't be afraid to go heavy. Um, I because you're going to need the it. cuts in the um, in the in the blank in the uh, Shh, can't tell anyone about oh. it. It's called lock and load. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, actually, we'll, sh we'll, we'll need to show people that properly uh, oh, one yeah. day. It's a little week. little custom <laughs> thing we have built into some rods called lock and load. Uh, you need to talk to us off air to that's right. find out the secret <laughs> yeah. about lock and load. Bring so, up, um, all good, and we'll do it on another uh, on another yep. show. But that's it for that's for kingfish because we do need to move on, boys. I had a um, I had an email this week, and I don't know if this is someone mucking around. Right? I don't know if it's someone like that. What's his it, name? It's from you, Trevor. Well, it's, yeah. well, it's Peter, Peter Walsh from Swan Hill. Oh. And it said, G'day, guys. Can you please replay the water going into Tolondo as I missed it last week? I can hardly believe you got water flowing into Tolondo. That is more unbelievable than Tony Abbott making Prince Philip a knight. <laughs> Let's have a look at the water flowing back into Tolondo. <laughs> Now that, that's genuine. He, I don't know. Peter Walsh, Swan Hill, it just says he wanted to see that again. So there you go, Peter. We've done that for you. And if you want to see it live, it's still running in. It's still running <laughs> in now. So, um, <laughs> boys, a, a few people reported over the last week that the water was very stirred up with all the new water going in. I can take my glasses off now. Uh, and a lot of sediment in the water, which you'd expect. It's like mixing up your fish tank at home. Yeah. Um, have a look at these couple of photos uh, of Jeff Stock's granddaughter. There was a, a nice trout come out this morning. And also his son. Uh, you can see a little snippet of the fish on the right hand side, but there was another one. There we go. Uh, Jeff Stock's son. A couple of cracker fish. So there's still good fish there. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually wait a couple nice. of weeks, but I'd, that's just showing how good I'd, I'd almost wait. Typically yeah. speaking, you wait till the, all the water's in. It settles for a, a week or so, and then watch it explode. Yeah. Because it'll be mm. mental. Anyway, it'll be mental. <laughs> good, good news, Tolondo. <laughs> yeah. People are still raving Back up about and it. Running. Um, get Back onto up the Tolondo page on Facebook and read some of the comments and see the photos up there. People yep. are putting photos of the water level coming up and that. So it's a great thing. But I tell you what, up next, Fisheries News. And gee, there's some idiots out there. They have no respect for the bag limits. You'll see all that. All the pics coming up straight after this. Talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now it's time for the news, the fisheries news. Yeah, it's a bit fishy to me. Uh, a bit of fisheries news, but boys, just before we go to that, um, as soon as I've done the news, we're going live to Richie Minow, who is at the tennis for a tennis update. We thank all you people watching us tonight instead of the Australian Open because I know it's a big game, uh, but we will have a live score update with you straight after the fisheries news. Now, boys, abalone thieves to be charged over a legal haul. An, an anonymous tip-off to the fisheries offence reporting line 13 Fish earlier this month has led to three people allegedly being caught with more than 50 times the daily catch for abalone near Mount Eliza. And this is dear to my heart. I don't know if you know Mount Eliza well, but I mean, I you know moved to Frankston when I was two and left there when I was about 
42. <laughs> um, and these guys, a little uh, place called Davies Bay um, near Mount Eliza, which is only a very small reef, very small little beach, beautiful place. 273 abalone they had, and 14 of them uh, were legal size. The rest what? were undersized. Um, you saw the photo just up there. Like they just, that, that would have wiped out yeah. probably the population of abalone in Davies Bay. It's just disgusting. And I just, uh, you know, we had a fisheries officer on 3RW on Friday night um, talking about it. You just wonder when it's going to stop because it's just, mm. there's just abalone thieves out there just doing it all the time. It's just ridiculous. Anyway. And they're the only ones to catch. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's right. They don't yeah, only just, catch, I reckon, I mean, a small percentage. So um, just drives you nuts. Another one, uh, and this is a good news story, better access for Great Ocean Road rock fishers. Um, anglers now have better access to rock fishing spots at, spots at Boggley Creek near Lawn, thanks to new steps that descend from the Great Ocean Road. That was actually funded by our licence money. What a great there idea. There you go. Yeah, so that, it gives you great access onto yeah, the beach. Look, that, that type of thing, yeah. I think, is just fantastic. Yeah. How many times do you get somewhere yeah. and you can't get you can't down get there? Or you nearly yeah. break your neck scaling yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. bank or you something You like stand that. up and have a look and go, oh, how good yeah. does that look down there? Yeah. But I can't oh, yeah. get there. That, that sort of stuff should be everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely everywhere. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Um, and let's talk about the idiots again. Taking undersized snapper doesn't pay is the headline. Uh, a call to the 1-3 fish offence reporting line recently helped Fisheries Victoria officers detect two Melbourne men aged 24 and 27. So they're young blokes. Yeah. Um, old, old enough to know better. Yep, St Helens, uh, which is just north of Geelong. And what was it? They stopped the men's car at 8.30 at night. They had 55 snapper in the boot. That's them there, the fish laid out. So I mean, they don't get returned to the water. They're no, dead. Yeah. You know, 55 snapper in the boot, boot, of which only one met the legal minimum size of 28 centimetres. Now, you just got to mm. shake your head. Yeah. Who are these idiots? And what are they thinking? What, do you, what would you do? Well, yeah, so you I don't know. What would you do with 55 yeah. small snapper like that? Yeah. Well, it's not even worth selling. You don't get that much meat on them. <laughs> no. That's what I don't understand. Yeah, um, you really wonder. Th the good thing out of these couple of reports is that the 1-3 fish line, and <clears throat> you know, there is the odd comment by people saying, oh, it doesn't work, you get a call centre. Mm. Um, I actually had reason to ring it the other day, or just something that was a bit sus through the shop, and um, got, a got, a, sorry, got a fisheries officer who then put me through to the licensing people, and, uh, and, and it was good. Yeah. First time I'd ever rung it. So have some confidence that 1-3 fish or 1-3... I bet you they haven't got it here. Having trouble on the crossword. Well, they, you know, they, you've got to work out what FIS <laughs> is. What did you ring for having trouble on the crossword? Or something? 1-3 <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. fish is 1-3-3-4-7-4. Three, 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 it's probably a fishing <laughs> question. Yeah. What? What? Crossword was probably a fish, fishing answer or something. Yeah. Yeah. One three fish. One three three four seven four. It go. works. So a uh, bit, of, bit of news. Now we're going to cross live to Richie Minow, who has a update on the Andy Murray Nick... What's his name? Curios. 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 Uh, how are we going, Richie? Yes. Good evening, David, and good evening, everyone. Uh, Richie Minow live at the tennis. Andy Murray versus Nick Curios. Andy won the first set 6 3. Currently, Nick Curios in the second set is leading 6 5. Marvellous game, this. I'll tell you what. Hey, Richie. Oh, hey. Yeah, Richie. Hey, Richie. Hey, Richie. Yeah, we're we still there, Richie. <laughs> Watch out for Rich, sleep goals, Richie. Just, <laughs> hey, hey, Richie, guess what? What's that? Trolley and I here too. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> Trolley and... Watch out for the seagulls, Richie. <laughs> Marvellous. Uh, I tell you what, the things... Thank you, you very much. Sh shut up, Richie. Uh, the things you can do live on there television. But anyway, thank you very much to people that are watching Talking Fishing instead of the tennis, because I know it is a big game over there. Sounds like that could uh, go to five sets. Yeah, and, um, bring it on. Yeah. 9.30, people may just flick over yeah. it. Watch this right to the end, because there's some really good stuff coming out. Boys, I want to talk about uh, this one. Um, rock fishermen are being urged to wear life jackets after two people were swept off the rocks and drowned in Victoria this month. A 67-year-old man, um, he was swept into sea while fishing at Sorrento on January the 10th, and the same occurred to a 26-year-old man at Portland on January the 18th. Now, uh, again, I had Victoria Police, the water police, on the show on Friday night on 3 w and I guess... One, I don't know what you do, um, yeah. mm. but it's heading, unfortunately, towards probably a coronial inquiry on drownings for surf fishing. And what happened 10 years ago when there was a, a coronial inquiry on um, on drownings out of boats is they significantly changed the life jacket laws, which I didn't at the time 
agree with, and and I'm still up in the air. You know, four point eight meters, you've got to wear yeah. one. Under twelve meters, if yeah. you're on your own, all that sort of stuff. Three inches of water. This yeah. could significantly change with Both. the amount of drownings. Yeah. It could change that people have to wear life jackets when they go rock fishing. Yeah. So well, I think it's, it's one of those things that you know, if you're responsible for your own life. You, who do you? Who do you? you know, it's like saying, okay, you should wear a helmet in a car. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. that will greatly, greatly reduce yeah. the injuries in cars. Yeah, yep. but you know, it's the same thing. Probably uh, back when you were about twenty-five years old, they introduced seatbelts, Trelly. That was back right. in the sixties or something. Exactly, and yeah. I um, wore used to tie the dog up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, what we are going to do? It's, it's a serious, <laughs> a serious thing, and people really need to think about rock fishing and their safety. But we've actually got life-saving Victoria because they're um, in the midst of a very big project to try and change the behaviour of rock fishers. So we've got someone from Life Saving Victoria going to come and yeah, join yeah, us so next that, week. That's that's I, that's probably more the answer rather than muck around with life jacket laws and things, yeah. education. Yeah. We don't associate Victoria with a massive, I guess, rock fishing fraternity, no. but there is. But there's too many death ads. Exactly, no, the, that's what I'm saying. For the least amount of people that, yeah, no, that yeah, are that's, it, and that's still what I'm getting saying. So the education needs to be, uh, I think they're down the right track. Yeah. I mean, it's, if I was as you said, Charlie. If I was the rock wall, and I, I, and I'd just look at that word. I'd put, I'd put a life jacket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, There's a bit of common sense. I've got to yeah. come into play. Boys, we've got to go to a break. Kramer's Mailbag plus all the details on two of the best fishing competition competitions mm -hmm. in Victoria. Up this next on Talking yeah. Fishing. <laughs> talking fishing. Talking fishing. Talking fishing. Nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. <laughs> And welcome to Kramer's Mailbag. But just before we get into the mailbag, there has been some news from the Australian Open. Richie Minow, have we got you again? Yes, indeed you have, everyone. And, and how, I'd like score? to say hello to David, Trelly, and Adam. There See, I go. haven't forgotten everyone. Now. Richie, can you get on with the score? How's the tennis going? Absolutely. Andy Murray has just won the second set against Nick Kyrgios in a tie break. 7-6. So Andy Murray leads two sets to nil. Thank you very much. <laughs> he had a bit of a, uh, two, a bit of Richie Benno there, didn't nice he? Uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, on you, Richie. Oh, probably. Um, a bit of Kramer's mailbag, boys. Uh, John Caffarella, he asks, a tackle world stocking these cushets again? He's been trying to get a couple for jigging for some months now, and no one has had them. Can you please tell me where they're sold? So, yes. Um, well, they were out for a while, weren't they? They were, I, yeah. I there's been a few stocking the issues. The supplier of them didn't have... They're certainly around now. We've got plenty. So yep. um, if you want them, And they're a great alternative to a gimbal belt. Definitely. Very, very easy to use and, and so forth. So, they double as a good... Did you do as well? That's right. Oh, you can get a tune out of them. Yeah, don't start him. Go right <laughs> for the campfire afterwards. Yeah. Don't start him. Um, thanks, talking. Oh, this one came from Team Leach. We actually had their photo oh, in yeah. uh, yep. Catch of the Week. Thanks, Talking Fishing, for putting me and a hundred other boats at the rip to catch these kingies to seven kilos. We were trolling X wraps and jigging was our method. So, um, okay. and and I think we've had you've had the same thing verbal. Yeah. Uh, you know, in Geelong, Mornington, Cram, and uh, in the shops, just customers yeah. coming in saying, look. Um, it's just magnificent, and yep. and a lot of people are trying it for the first time. It's a bit like, I guess, Southern Bluefin tuna a few years ago that you know not a lot of people had been tuna fishing. Now we've got this tuna fishery in Victoria in the West that more and more people are doing it. More and more people get into the kings, and it's fantastic. Definitely. And it proves that we know what we're talking about. Well, yeah, there you go. Kind of. Thanks, team. Well, Thanks, team. Well, not, they'll probably drop a snapper. <coughs> Making us look good, yeah. <laughs> whatever the fish was. All right, Charlie, this is one for you. Uh, I have a question for you. This is from Colin Drever. Is there a reason the government cannot use water from the desalination plant to supply some of our waterways and lakes? I know that pipe and pumping stations would be required to do this, but as we all know, the whole idea of the desal plant is, to, is for it to run and supply water. We are paying for its operation, so why can't that water be put to good use in Victoria's waterways and lakes to improve fishing and farming in our region? Good question. Well, desal water, I thought the whole point of desal water was for human consumption. So I, mm. I would presume that the process that they would go through would be in a very expensive process to filter that water to that quality. So yeah. I don't see why you would do that and then put it down a river. Mm. Uh, you know, it's got to be, be able to bypass. Yeah, but if they put it into a dam where, where our water supplies come from, <coughs> like, mm. like, like, would you keep Lake Eildon at 100? I guess you can't because then when, a rain, when the rain comes, yeah, it'll flood. Yeah. Won't we? So, yeah. yeah, good question. And a great question. Well, I, I think it'd take a lot of pipe and a lot of pumps to yeah. get it to Tolondo from Wontaggy, wouldn't it? So, 
Um, yeah. yeah, what do you do? Haven't, haven't really got an answer on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Colin, but anyway, um, it sounds good in theory. Maybe we should build Get a big it, yeah. dam near One Thaggy. There you go. And well, make a heap right. of water and store yeah, it. Just for environmental purposes. Oh, yeah, put a barrel money in it. Yeah, 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 why not? Going to do that to Hales. We might as well do another yeah, one. I've, yeah. I've got a real quick one before you oh, move yeah. on, Dave. Sorry. I had a visit from someone during the week. Yeah. Now, young Jake Politis. I apologise if I've mispronounced your surname. But him and his family came down to Mornington to drop in and say good day. All he wanted to do was meet David Kramer. We won't hold that against oh, him. That's my nephew. And I was <laughs> okay. I'll do this, my nephew. And I, I, I was. I mean, yeah. I was there. The consolation prize. Yeah. yeah well. Right. But the, but what he, he had sent in a few photos. He'd recently been on a great trip down at um, in Dennet Head and got a heap of squid and yeah. nice little I think we featured there. him maybe once or twice in mm, Catch of the Week. May, maybe. Mm. Um, maybe. Keep the pics coming, mate. Thank you for coming yeah. down and saying good day. We, re we really do appreciate it. Um, make sure you keep sending the pics. Keep going fishing because, mate, you are a little champion and those squid you caught on that day were unbelievable. So no, thanks, ask, thanks, Jake. Well done, Jake. Adam, Adam next time. Makes it feel important. Ask the trolley, you'll never find him. Uh, if you'd like to write to me, all these blokes, this is what you have to do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, PO Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197, or email Kramer at ifish.com.au. And don't forget, you can keep up to date with our official Facebook page with Catch of the Week, Hotspots and much more. Don't forget to like us and to make it easier, just go to our website at talkingfishing.com.au and click on the links to Facebook or Twitter. Um, you'll see all the pics and all that sort of stuff. Now, Richie's just saying to me that Andrew Murray's just having a drink in between sets, so uh, nothing much to report <laughs> from the great, tennis. But great, great, great reporting, Richie. Thanks, but, mate. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Richie will be, in my, he'll be in my ear pretty shortly if something happens in the third set. So keep us up to date, Richie. On, <laughs> Richie's on the salt water, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> He's in there. Um, boys, a couple of changes at fisheries. That uh, I, I know that sort of stuff doesn't get announced too much, but Ross McGowan, yep. who was the uh, executive director of fisheries for probably the last near two years, has yep. uh, moved uh, position, and I think that spot's a bit vacant now. I think there's an acting... Uh, Western one of the Front. Acting Western Front. Um, yep. And while well, I'm not going to harp on that, um, I, it, it's... On onwards and upwards with fisheries, that's all I'll say, yeah. because there was a gentleman called Anthony Hurst who was doing that job for several years before uh, Ross went into the chair, and I guess I likened it at the time because it was a, a state government initiative to move the deck chairs around and, and probably reduce a few numbers and all that, but I likened removing Anthony Hurst from Fisheries Victoria to Eddie Maguire taking Mick Malthouse out, and uh, look where that's got Collingwood. You know, it, it's yeah. um, you had a guy who I would say, and I'm not pumping up his tyres, was doing the best job that I've ever seen the executive director of fisheries doing, and then they move him out. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, it takes a very strong person to lead that uh, fisheries Victoria. Fishery, fisheries is a complex um, part of life. You know, there's highly regulated, highly licensed um, policing. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, you've got the environmental side of fishing and, and, and you know, there's a whole lot of political so stuff you, around you're fishing. you're trying to say you should be back in the job there? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind him coming back to the job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not at all. I'm not, Director I'm, of fisheries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, that's what, <laughs> it, it would be a good move, yeah. but all I'm saying is that it takes a very special person to run fisheries that well. Yeah. And, you know, we're also going into a very big period of change where they're talking about making fisheries a statutory authority, which gives them their own little entity. They're not just part of DPI and get exactly, their budget yeah. cut whenever DPI wants some more money or yeah, whatever. So um, there's a massive change. And look, we might be able to um, talk to the minister. We've got the minister coming in in about three weeks' time. The new minister for fisheries, Jala Pulford, she'll be in joining us on the couch in about three weeks' time. So, nice. um, plenty to talk about with mm. her, you yep. know. And, and uh, we'll talk about some of the initiatives and, and get her idea on, on a few of those things. So, Excellent. it's all good stuff. Um, boys, a couple of comps coming up. Uh, Victor in fact, I'll, I'll get the information here. Victorian Game Fish Classic, and I think we've got a little bit of a slide for the people at home, is on the 7th and 8th of February. Um, it's held out of Western Port Angling Club down at Hastings. Now, for those of you that don't know, this was the comp that was uh, used to be run out of Rill, and it was really more shark comp. You know, yeah. it was all about Makos. Um, it's, no, it's now, uh, you know, Kingfish are a big part of it. A stripy tuna, southern bluefin tuna, if you can get one. Um, and there's a, a point system. I mean, you know, um, Makos are probably worth more points than that. Yep. But people are targeting some of those others, and I think you'll probably mm. see more kingfish than ever before at this comp. And look, it, it is a members only, so you've got to be a, a member of Victorian Game Fishing Club or an associated member or whatever. But um, it's it's 
a, a comp that you have to be a member of. Join them if you want to, and you saw all the details up on the screen there. And I guess the other thing is, if you're not a member and you're not fishing it, go down and have a look. I used to go down to this at Rill, and it was a fair drive, but you used to see all the sharks and stuff like that, and just get an idea of what sort of game fish are around Victoria. Go to this one. It's on uh, 7th and 8th of February. We'll have all the details up on our Facebook page next week. Um, but it is a classic, and you'll see some good fish. And after the break, we'll talk about another comp. But coming up on Talking Fishing, this week's Hot Spots, what's coming up on C31 Fishing, the Whiting Challenge info, right after this. <laughs> Talking fishing, talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Hello, Richie Minnow here. It's now time for this week's fishing hotspots on Talking Fishing. Marvellous. And good to see Richie's back from the tennis. He swims and, uh, pretty quick. He swims yeah. pretty quick. Don't know uh, about Richie. Uh, Richie, just anyway. <laughs> Richie just whispered, whispered in my ear that Andy Murray's 2-1 in the third set for anyone that's interested in the, in, the, uh, in the tennis. But let's have a look at some of the hot spots at the moment. Simmons Channel kicks us off first just on the uh, western side of, Fre uh, of French Island, of Mud Island. <laughs> um, Simmons Channel just absolutely fishing fantastically, not only for King George Whiting, but I know John Soldatus from our bait suppliers fished there on the weekend and got some cracker big flathead amongst the whiting as well. So awesome. it's also um, a bit of a renowned gummy shark spot for absolutely. Southern Port Phillip yeah, too. So not far from everything, is it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So not nice uh, little spot there. Mount Martha um, is our second hot spot. Some good snapper, and I know uh, Jason Turner went out of Karen, but he actually got the fish more down towards <laughs> Mount go. Martha. Yeah. Um, good, there's always good fishing this time of year down Mount Martha. In deep, 21, 22 metres, um, some cracker snapper well, it's, around It's there. our snapper season this time of year. I know yeah. to the rest of the world it's it's done and dusted, yeah. but this is our st for, that, for us on the peninsula, this is our snapper season yeah. right now. Deep yeah. water, get yeah. amongst it. Absolutely. Number three, Clifton Springs. Um, not only, again, not only some good whiting coming from there, although when I say good, uh, they've been a little bit on the small side compared to, say, the Mornington Peninsula. So nice whiting, but also some cracker flathead along Clifton Springs area as well. Mm. This has made a bit of a name for itself for the flatties in the last few years. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah the, um, get a lot of reports in on our side of town too with Clifton Springs and the whiting there. So yeah. a little bit of netting going on over there, unfortunately. Well, I think they're working it hard, aren't they, Charlie? They are working it hard over that way, so yeah. you see the weed. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's something we need to talk to the minister about when she sits on the couch with us. There you go. Yes, write get, it down. Get the netting done now. Write it down. Get it banned. Yeah. Um, let's head over to Western Port now, San Remo. Again, it's all about the whiting over there and some beautiful whiting coming from the San Remo area. Yeah, and it's um, generally bigger whiting from this area, highly tidal. Yeah. So generally the water's a little bit clearer um, down here, and said it's it's a great place. Not too many people head down down that way. You don't hear of it too much, but no. a, a great little whiting. But the spot. guys that fish it, and there's still oh, people on holidays down that way. they big bags of whiting there. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Number five, Turretin Channel. Gee, we're covering a lot of whiting spots this week, aren't we? So, oh, and, yeah. and so we should, because it, it is, you know, we're right in smack bang whiting season, and we can't mention the rip because people told us off yeah. there's too many boats there. <laughs> so we won't mention <laughs> the rip. Yeah. Uh, the Turretin Channel is really good for King George whiting <laughs> yeah. at the moment. And, and, <laughs> and Turretin Channel would be, I reckon, just about number one in Western Port at the moment. Yeah. There's heaps of whiting in the channel itself. There's gummies just outside the Turretin channel and there's also whiting sitting in the deeper water out there too in that sort of 14, 15 metres. So mm. um, if you want a whiting, Turretin. Absolutely. Now, uh, we talked about San Remo before. You might have to launch around that area if you want to head to the next hot spot, which is offshore from Kilcunda. Um, some Makos around. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's Makos, we were talking about it today. Is it going to be a Mako season? Because I think a lot of people that would be going for Makos are going for Kingfish that's, right Yeah, now. that's right. It's like they've got this other alternative, but the yeah. Makos are there. There's yep. definitely some Makos around. I saw some beautiful footage in the last couple of days, guys on their iPhones filming 100 kilo Makos doing somersaults behind the yeah. boat. And that There's some ripper Makos around and at the And it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me with all this Kingfish activity that we start to see a few Makos caught in closer than what we're... Yeah. associated with getting them. We always talk about that 50 to 70 metre line. Um, surely they have to come in on those kings. Yeah. If there's kings hanging around close yeah, really inshore, mm. you'd, you'd think that the makers would be coming in on them. Absolutely, yeah. 
Yep. So there you go. That's the hot spots. Like I said, they'll all be up on our Facebook page tomorrow. Adds another big whiting comp or fishing competition coming up. The yes. whiting challenge. You've got all the details yep. there. The 26th annual Western Port Whiting Challenge is on Saturday, the 28th of Feb and Sunday, the 1st of March. A heap of prizes. An $8,000 first prize. Wow. A thousand dollars cash from Paul Worsling for the first one kilo King George. Oh, party. I'd love to see that go. Oh, off. it's due. It's <laughs> surely <laughs> good. Surely it's. <laughs> You'd have to reach into his wallet. The moths would, you know, just fly out. <laughs> That's right. A <laughs> thousand big ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the Western Port five dollar notes. Yeah, yeah. 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 five cent pieces. Five cent pieces. Yeah. The, the Western Western Port Angling Club doing a great job again at getting this one organised. Loads of prizes. Kids sections. Uh, what are we, both male and female categories, mystery weight prizes. Um, it's going to be a big comp. So, Rex and with Hunt's the whiting season, yeah, Rex Hunt presenting. Hopefully um, he's good over. He's got a bit of a back problem at the moment. So hopefully he's he's over. Well, he'll, he'll make his way down there. Don't worry about that. So, yeah, although I think he was having an operation, wasn't he? So, yeah, just I just wonder whether he's still telling. Oh, we might have to phone yeah, him. Right. You know, <laughs> all right, but, you should um, go and do it, Charlie, if he's not going. Oh, yeah, hey? right, yeah. <laughs> oh, you'd be good at that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be good at that, I reckon. Grow a beard in three days or something. Yeah. And so you can grab an entry form from all good tackle stores. Very good. Um, Trelly, Geelong, uh, what's the news out of Cryo Bay? Is there much? Yeah, you, actually... You were down there today? Well, it was down there today, and it's a lot of the uh, reports that have come back from down there is what we're talking about, the kingfish. Yeah. And it, it is more more probably the, the rip and that type of thing has been more the talk. Mm. Um, Cryo Bay and around it... The, Unfortunately, the, probably the, the, some of the talk is, is on the netting down there and the, and the, um, the aftermath of what's going on. And you can see the weed and things floating around. You know, they're catching whiting one day and then they're yeah. not working the next day. Yeah. yeah, perhaps we could touch on it again later on. But, um, but still, you know, in amongst all that, there's some, there's some nice whiting being caught. Yep. Um, I think the winds are probably against us a little yeah. bit yeah. sometimes. Hasn't summer sort of, I'm not saying it totally disappeared, but it's just it's gone weird. funny, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It's, yeah. A, it's been a funny summer. Yeah. Yeah. We can only yeah. hope that there's a bit more warmth coming, but... Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the water, nasty run of it the the last water temperature week. hasn't peaked, you know, like if you yeah. look at the yearly cycle, it's it's usually February um, where you get the hottest water. So yeah. um, well, it, was, happened, it wasn't and it? it wasn't till March, February, March last year that we're talking about kingfish. So to be talking That's about right, it yeah. right now is a is a great yeah. sign. I, I hope really they stay around. Oh, they'll stay around. What's after kingfish? There's no reason bluefin tuna. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be all yeah. going to Portland. But, but no, I <laughs> well, and there has been bluefin caught. I saw has. some um, yeah. photos from Scott Gray the other day. Yep. Southern bluefin tuna. So, um, yeah. But I think people have just got to get a few things out of their system before they start travelling down to <laughs> to Portland. But yeah. that, that this may will be just... A long, it'll be a long kingfish season in Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, it will I hope be. so. Yeah. And then it'll just click over. People will go, all right, time for Portland tuna. Let's go west. Um, but in amongst that, you've got marlin. Ex yeah, you know, exactly. And people say, oh, the marlin season's coming soon to Bermagui. No, it's, it's, there now. it's happening now. And They're I know a few of the charter guys. Bite. Yeah. A few of the yep. charter guys are going out there shortly. Sharky, Simon Rinaldi and that. Yep. Um, if they're there right now, they'd be every day, you know. Yeah, so. and, and there's fish everywhere. I mean, Burmese has been awesome, and that's and that's the place we associate with Marlin. It's been that way for many years. But Jarvis Bay has been really good. Bermagui has yep. been really good. There's fish coming out of Eden. The kingfish, though small, are still there around that, um, I guess, Eden, Green Cape. Yeah. So there's plenty going on. There is Heaps. so much going on. Boys, I've got to move on to what's coming up on C31. Tonight, straight after us, Catch and Cook and 10 o'clock Savage Seas Adventures. Tomorrow, the new show, 6.30 in the morning, Liquid Vision. Check it out before you go to work. It's not a bad show. And Thursday, 6.30 in the morning, Australian Fishing Network and 10 p.m. that night, Liquid Vision. Liquid Vision getting a very, very good run. Friday, Catch and Cook in the morning, followed by Liquid Vision against, again at 7 o'clock. And then on Saturday, like we always say, the big extravaganza. By the way, all this is up on our Facebook page tomorrow, so if you want to see what's coming up, easily to get it all in one spot. Um, um, but Liquid Vision, 10 o'clock. Savage Seas Adventures, 10.30. 11 Australian Fishing Network, 11.30. That's fishing. 12 noon, catch and cook. Then Saturday night, that's fishing. Liquid Vision, Australian Fishing Network. Absolutely some good stuff there, Huge. boys. So, Trolley, um, just very quickly, trout. Is there much around the Goulburn, Rubicon, Eildon that you've heard? Or do you not hear much of that at Shepparton? Not not this time of year. I mean, we're, we're in hotter weather now, so I usually target them in the wintertime. Yep. You, you might get a couple up at Eildon if you're sort of, you know, trying to sort of work your lures really deep, paravanes and things like that, you'll pick yeah. up a couple. But um, 
There's, there's sort of too much easy happening with the cod and the yellow belly and things. Yeah. Level of the Goulburn River at the moment? Uh, it's just about, it's a little bit above summer level, so there's a bit of water coming down, but it's, it's yep. good clear water. Yeah. And it's fishing fishing very well. Barmer's up a little bit. There's a bit of water through the bush up around the Barmer yep. Forest. It's up and running a bit hard, so probably more bait fishing up that way. Yeah. But again, we're getting some uh, good reports from Yildon. Yep. Um, lures that die. Oh, Nella has been fishing really well too. Okay. So, yeah, yep. some, a lot of pictures coming in from Nella Cootie on Murray Cod and things. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, that's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget all the info from tonight's show will be on our Facebook page tomorrow. Hope you all catch lots of fish this weekend and until next Tuesday evening, stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing.